excited to see him, but I didn't think I need to share it with the universe. <laughs> the universe. <laughs> the universe of YouTube. Today we are doing oil change 101. Step one, remove plastic pieces that are easy to remove that you don't want to get covered in oil. Because the filter, this bike is right here. Oh, okay. Real easy to get to, but it ends up pooling in here when you take it off. So. Oh, that's not like the oil pan? I thought that was the little built-in oil pan that they gave you. That's it. For balance heads. So your drain plug is, I believe, a 14 or a 17. I can't remember. It's both on here, and it's right. Here, right in front of me. It's a 17. I don't have a drain pan, though. I just realized. Just let it go on the floor. Don't worry about it. I'm so used to being at the back of my house. Milk jug? Take a milk jug and uh, cut the sides out? You got like a recycle? It wouldn't be big enough. Sure, a gallon? A milk jug holds a gallon. Yeah, but how am I going to get it under there? It's not get, fit. Just put it on the side. Put it on the side, cut a little thing out. Oh, That's an old trick. Oh my gosh, good. you don't know that old trick? I got some milk ah, jugs. Ah. Let me look in the recycling bay and see. All it has to hold is two liters. Yeah, it's true. Although they overfilled it. Yeah. As usual. What do we have? What do we have? I'm going to go look inside. Okay. Nothing in there. Um, also, sometimes if you have a windshield washer um, thing that only has a little dab left in it, too, I've taken those and cut the sides out. Oh, yeah. Any type of a gallon jug, or in your case, even a half gallon jug would probably do it. No, I'll go look inside. I'll be right back. Okay. Aha, right here we got one. All you'd have to do is just take one of the vehicles and add the rest of it or put it in another container, a smaller container, and just tell them. Is there a container in here we can put it in? Put it in a wine bottle. There's a wine bottle in there. <laughs> tell them you bought some you bought some special blue wine. It's got pina it's got still got some pina noir. Uh, Let me go uh, rinse it. Pina blue nada. I'll be right back. Okay. Now I have a question from my viewers for you, Lori. Mm, sure Do you, you like Pina Blunada and getting caught in the rain? <laughs> uh. Do not try this at home, kitties. Never put um, these type of fluids in a drinkable bottle. And then back in the fridge. Here, Mom. It's, uh, made of That's how I actually, as a kid, ended up handicapped. My dad put gasoline in a Coke bottle. Oh, your dad did? Yeah, and I drank it. I well, didn't drink it, but I took a gulp of it and tried to spit it out, and it went up in my nose. My uh, Inside lining of my nose is burned out. A friend of mine did that. His dad, someone had been cleaning and left bleach in a cup. Ooh. He drank the whole thing and went, that didn't taste right. Mm. Went upstairs and laid down because he didn't feel good and woke up. Had no ill effects from it whatsoever. Wow. Which is just crazy. Must not have been real strong bleach then, hopefully. Oh, it was. Oh, it was? Uh -huh. it was basically straight bleach. Yuck. I don't know how he did that without... Yeah. But his family freaked out when they realized. But he was fine. And he didn't even turn into a superhero. Like, what the heck? Hmm. If you're going to do something like that, you should build a global... Yeah, in the movies, that always happens, doesn't it? You drink some strange chemicals and then you get superpowers. When I was young, I always thought that like on the cartoon shows and the TV shows, that if you just mix the right two chemicals together, you could make this miracle fluid or miracle substance. I always thought I was just, you know, one step away. Not quite enough. Well, I'd say you got probably about 10 cents worth at the bottom there. Probably nobody would object if you just dump it on the, dump ground. It on the ground.
Okay, don't drink the blue stuff. No, don't drink the blue wine. Or the blue wine. I was looking for this. Now, do you have a razor knife or do you want to borrow my pocket knife? I do not have a razor knife. Now, okay. how am I cutting this? Cut the side out of it so you can slide it under. Put the cap back on and then you're going to cut the side out and just kind of use it oh. as a pan. Isn't it going to roll around? Yeah, you'll have to hold it while you're draining oil. Somebody will have to hold it for you because it's not like a... The antifreeze ones are the best. If you have an empty antifreeze container, it just lays flat on its side and just makes into a little pan. Cut a square, square window on it. Doesn't have to be terribly big. Nope. If you only have two quarts to drain, it won't take very long to drain it out anyway. So here's what you do when you don't have the right tools, huh? Yep. What we're going to do when you're done changing the oil is we're going to take that and slowly pour it into the containers. Yep. And then you can take it to a uh, oil change place for recycling. Maybe we can't just duct tape it closed? Uh, it would not probably be the silliest thing anybody's ever actually done. And there's probably a YouTube video of it. <laughs> Dar, this will... Here, hold my beer. Every... Every silly idea I've ever thought about has been a YouTube video somewhere that somebody's made. If there's no blood on the floor, then it's a successful operation. Alright. Now usually what I do is I place something. Let me move this. tell you, my parents are picky about the garage floor. If I, uh, yeah. if I do spill any oil, I'll be going to buy some kitty litter. Okay. Uh, I like to place something underneath the kickstand to rise it up a little bit, make it more level. Yeah, like a little piece of scrap wood or something. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm looking for now. Hmm. Um, couldn't just hold this up. Scrap wood. Wow, a garage with no scrap pieces of 2 by 4 or anything. It's like my parents almost are, uh, everybody use, use that for uh, wheel chocks even. Okay. Well, they don't work on their own stuff. Oh, okay. As you can see, my garage is a, uh, a workplace. Yeah. It's a hacker's place. All right, I'm going to fold it one too many times. That's good enough. It doesn't need to be perfectly vertical. Okay. Alright. I'm going to take my jug. Take my wrench. Yeah, look, it's holding it for me. Hey, how about that? I do believe it is a 14. No, it is a 17. I get that confused. The KLX is a 14. Okay. So, I need my thing to do. Cheater bar? Cheater bar. I'm a girl. I don't have hand strength for that kind of crap. I don't have a cheater bar either. Over here. Do you have an open end wrench? What are the wrenches? Do you have do you have a box end wrench? Holy crap. If you have a box end wrench you can use that too. A what? You have a box end wrench? I don't That's even the know what that means. That means it's got a, it's got it's shaped like a an O mm -hmm. on one end. No, but this You got it? Okay, yeah. you got it loose. I want that too. I was like, who changed this? And I was like, oh, I did. Mm. <laughs> I put that on there like that. As tight as it'll go in two more turns? Yep. That's what I always say. Why is it red? 
It doesn't really look that polluted. Mm -mm. It's coming out black though. You know, some of the synthetics now that I notice that I get too, they kind of look rather uh, dark colored even when there's no wear on them. Yeah, the viscosity is still good, but it yeah. looks bad. I know what you're saying. Let me grab another rag. We got a bucket of rags at least. Oh, okay. We just don't have any wood. You're not handy, but you're messy. Yes. Here, an old sock. An old sock, okay. Hey, we could pour all the oil in the sock. That's it. I don't need to oil filter. Let's use a sock. That would uh, be all the bad stuff, right? Yeah. Harley's in the middle 60s. I don't think he even had oil filters. It was until the late 60s, early 70s to where they started. You just changed the oil, but there was no oil filter. Like a little 50cc thing? It's like a screen? No, when I mean nothing. I mean, no, I mean, but that's how the 50ccs are. Oh, they are? Okay. Yeah. Just just an oil strainer, huh? Yeah, there's a strainer. There's no filter. Some of the smaller dirt bikes are still like that. Little 50s, little 80s, some of yeah. the older 100s. I mean, I suppose if you changed it real often, it probably wouldn't make a big difference. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be exactly half a gallon, pretty much. When I was, I didn't even have it level, and it was all the way past the side class, yeah. so they overfilled it, because it was a little low for my trip up here. Yeah. It, it, it burned a little oil, apparently, on the way up here, but, you know, if you're going 80 miles an hour for eight hours, what do you expect? Yeah. But they, uh, I think they overfilled it a little bit. I wish it was warmer inside. That was my donut. Did you hear that? Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was mine or... Well, that was mine. My oh. stomach said, thank you for the donut. I wonder if the microphone picked that up. Lori's <laughs> stomach, stomach just talking. rumbled. I'm sit here and wait. This is the most exciting part my of gosh, my gosh, that lunch. muffler is big there. That's like, is that the muffler or the catalytic converter? This is the catalytic converter oh. and the muffler built into one. Wow. I'm thinking about replacing it at some point if I win the lottery. But that is such a monstrous looking piece. Just to get rid of that thing, yeah. yeah. I don't care about sound or weight, or performance, none of that matters to me. This bike's a commuter. Yeah. I've, in I've upgraded the suspension and that's it. Does that thing really heat up like a catalytic converter on a car? Yeah, oh, and, it, it, and it, con it, it, it does condense with water, and I think that's where some of my water issues and my oil is coming from. Huh. It's actually from that stupid thing, because I think it comes back in. Ooh. Yeah, it's dumb. We're the only country that has it. Yeah. Because you know, our stupid government is stupid. Uh oh, I got that on camera. They're going to be watching. Yeah. That. You know what? I'm already on all kinds of lists, so <laughs> it doesn't matter at this Just point. Just hanging out with you. Now I'm on the list, too. Problem is, I'm libertarian, so both parties hate me. Nice. I'm an anarchist. Oh, okay. Anarchist is actually not a bad philosophy when you look into the way it is, I mean. Yeah. People say, well, it's impossible. Oh, well, that's a good reason not to believe in it. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of things are ideals. It, it doesn't just mean you can't aspire to them. Anything anybody else is allowed to do, you should be able to do. Yeah. You just basically live by the golden rule. It's mm. great. Live and let live. Be your own boss. They confuse it with anarchy. Anarchist is not the same yeah, as anarchy. Well, anarchy is, as a philosophy is different than yeah. the, the modern slang that it's come to mean, which is chaos, and it's not what it means. It's like even conservatives nowadays are not conservatives anymore. They're neocons, I call them. They're, they have this bizarre philosophy to where... Um, we don't help poor people anymore, but we help rich corporations. And right. It's like, that's neoconism to me. That's not conservative. Conservatism means even if you're a corporation, if you don't manage your affairs, you should fail. You don't get rescued and get special privileges just because you're a corporation. Yeah. Corporate welfare is still welfare. Yeah, they say they're against welfare, but... Yeah, but not if it's one of their buddies from GM or one of their buddies that's a bankster or something like that. Yeah. Then they're all for welfare at our expense where we pay for it. Oh, here's a tip for YouTube. Okay. If you find it's draining slowly, um, cracking open the, the fill will sometimes, it's too late now. Yeah, if there's an airlock in it. If there's an airlock in it, that'll help. Um, imagine if you had a ketchup bottle that was hard to empty and you cut a hole in the bottom to let the air through. It's that kind of idea. Not very exciting to watch. Well, at least we talked about government philosophy, so that made it a little more interesting. Problem is the people that are into politics probably never would have watched the start of it anyway, since it's about an oil change. Yeah. 
And the people that are into oil change are going, what the crap are they yapping about now? Yeah. She said crap. Yeah. I have to watch it too. Even the kids will freak when I say hell and I'm like, it's in the Bible. <laughs> what the oh, hell, guys? Right. It's in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's in the Bible, you can say it. But that was 2,000 years ago. Oh, okay. Plus. You have to, it's like a, allowing for conversion rates. So you have yeah. to look at what the modern equivalent would be. And Jesus called the people brood of vipers. It's yeah. pretty bad. Ice is going up the same. Man, that's draining forever. Hurry up. I usually, as soon as the little stream breaks into drops, then I usually yep. stop and I'm it. I'm like, we're done. I'm not sitting yeah. here forever. Yeah. To get every do. last little piece out. What I haven't done with this bike yet that I did do with the KLX is upgrade to a magnetic drain plug. A magnetic oh, okay. drain plug. This isn't for you. Again, this is just for you, too. You know. Yep. But all the threads there on the top here would be a magnetic piece instead of just normal metal. So the metal would be treated to be magnetic. And what that does is as the oil is circulating, because you got metal on metal inside the engine, and so um, any metal pieces that break loose would then flow in with the oil. You know, as metal's rubbing on metal, sandpaper, little bits are going to come loose. Uh, it should be minimal uh, if your engine's in good condition and whatnot, but it'll I, collect on here instead of continuing to circulate and being abrasive against the wall. I have seen new vehicles where I've actually put a magnetic drain plug in and seen some little shavings, and it's like better the magnetic drain plug catch them than they circulate around and... Yeah, because then they're, they're just going to be coarse. Yep. It'd be like running sand through there. It's going to sand things down, if you will. You don't want that in there. The idea of oiling an engine is so that things are smooth. You don't mm -hmm. want little gritty pieces in there. So in upgrading a magnetic plug can prevent that. And if, especially on a four-stroke, we're doing a top end is expensive and complicated compared to a two-stroke. It's definitely worth investing in because it can make your top end last a lot longer. And before you pull your spark plugs, always make sure to air blast it out too because you're going to drop little pieces of grit in the spark holes. Yep. Make sure your engine's super, super clean before you go opening it up. Not like this. It should not look like yeah. this. Covered. Actually, believe it or not, that's fairly clean though compared to most bikes I see. Well, I did just wash it, but then last night I rode it and all it's covered in salt right now from the ice storm. Here's where it crashed. Yep, this is the part that Lori showed in her latest video. It's dripping. So you take a little bit of the oil from that, and I always put it around on the threads. It helps keep the threads from seizing to the actual case. So when you go to take it off again the next time, it won't be as hard. Although I did do it this time, but um, I mean, I did it last time too. It, it's not like a cure all. It doesn't mean it's going to just come right off, but it will make it easier. It'll also make, if you put it on the washer, it'll help that washer seal better and not leak. It's your washer plastic, fiber, metal, what is it? Um, it's just a metal. Just a metal one, okay. You should replace this every time you do an oil change, but I never ever do unless it starts to leak. Yeah. So do as I do and not as I... Do, do as, as I you say. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Come on. I think she's cross-threading it, folks. Yep. That's the idea. Always gentle by hand. You don't want to use a tool uh, when you're first starting it for anything. For that reason, you can't actually cross-thread something on accident. Yeah, repairing. They do have kits to do it, but it's not fun repairing threads to a oil drain plug. I'll tighten it down here in a second. I just don't want to get the oil all over my tool, so I'm wiping the excess oil off the outside. And then righty tighty. She's left handed too, folks, so she has to do remember that. I know it's it a little It makes more... it so much harder because the the rotation of the earth works against me yeah. being being left handed. And even, I don't have a soul because I'm Even the earth even the earth fights Lori because she's left handed. Yeah. She's almost like a ginger person. Well, well she is ginger. a ginger. I'm a ginger. Oh, and you're left -handed. ginger and left-handed. Let me scoot back just a little more here, just in case. <laughs> you might get stuck. With <laughs> That's <flying>. right. 
I may, she'll, I may suck your soul. She'll, yeah, she'll suck my soul out. <laughs> All right, now for changing this, I'm not sure if I want to risk it. I mean, what we did was all the manufacturers, Honda, Kawasaki, they almost all have one filter. Um, Kawasaki's, I can't remember the part number, I should know it by heart. I think it ends in 1034 or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, this ends in D01. As long as we get the thread size correct and the gasket size correct, we're probably okay. That's what I'm guessing. If you notice looking on the outside, they're like identical. Yeah. Um, Suzuki's ends in X07. Mm -hmm. It used to be G something. It's like the same. Now I'd say the gasket is probably 100% guaranteed the same because I think all of them have an outside gasket. They don't do like cars where they put no. the gaskets to the, the end. Gaskets right there. They're always on the outside of the filters. And so. I bet you the threads are the same. So, so do we want to even... do want to try it? I'm just not sure it really needs it. Okay. I mean, it was just changed. With the whole yeah, thing changed. that's the thing. We're only doing it to get any just possible get contamination out that may be in the oil. I should hit the start button. That'd be funny. Oh, yeah, start and run it, and it's like, ah, uh, what's wrong with this picture? Why did it only turn over once? Yeah. Why is it, why is smoke everywhere? I just changed it. Oh, I forgot to reset my 3,000 miles ago. No, I had just changed it at 1,500 miles, so this oil has 1,500 miles on it. Okay. So, um, so that's fine. Another 1,500 miles. But I'm not going to bother changing it. What I normally do is I change the filter every yeah. 3,000 and the oil every 1,500 um, on my KLX because it's a high performance, if you will, supermoto now. And the whole thing's aftermarket except for the camshafts and the crank. So on that one, I change the oil every 500 and the filter every 1,000 or 1,500 depending on how hard I've been riding it. Basically every weekend yeah. I change the oil on the KLX. But I put a lot of money into that bike, so oil yeah. is cheap. And it takes, we're done. I mean, all you gotta do is fill it. And all. So, uh, if you were to change that, what you would do, you would either get the wrench that fits over the top here, or you can use um, a pipe wrench, which has like a rubber thing that basically cinches down onto it. You can use that to loosen it. If you're real desperate and you don't want to spend the money on, on the actual end cap filter for it, mm. or if you don't have a pipe wrench handy, um, you can use the old screwdriver and a hammer. And use a screwdriver to actually puncture it, and then mm -hmm. you can get leverage. Yeah, but turn it the other way. Don't turn it the way she just showed yeah, you, because that'll tighten it. <laughs> that way. And also, if you're going to do the screwdriver, do it as close to the end as you can to still have leverage, because you don't want to accidentally get those these threads. Yeah. You don't want to damage the threads, because part of your engine casing, the threads. Yeah, you'll actually make it worse. Out. Yeah, you'll make it worse for you to try to because turn it off. Because the threads out. of the engine are going inside here, so part of your mm -hmm. case is actually sticking out. And if you go through mm -hmm. that, you're stuck. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't, don't damage the threads, so. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to put the new oil in it. Um, I'm going to need a funnel. I have an idea. I've done this before. Pop bottle. Pop bottle makes pretty pretty good funnel. Yeah, okay, we got pretty much a water bottle, same thing. Yeah, except it's got water in it. This is, you know what this is kind of turning into? Huh. This is turning into kind of like a homeless person with no money's oil change video. <laughs> what are you saying? You were scrounging out of the garbage to get the tools to do it. It's like... Yeah. Is there a motor yeah. in here I could put in this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, next, next we're going to show you how to do a motor rebuild using nothing but stuff we find in the woods. I feel like MacGyver. <laughs> yeah. Can I have your uh, knife again? Okay. And what I do is I actually cut... Uh, I noticed I have the same knife as MacGyver carries, too. Did you carry the same knife? Yeah. Now I need a stick of gum, a toothpick. Yeah. Are and you going to make a nuclear weapon? Yes. Okay. I'm going to make a service to air missile using um, <laughs> this knife, this water bottle, and that mirror. Okay. No. That would be awesome. Now, ladies, this is a great trick if you're single. Mm -hmm. The idea is to need stitches mm. and then go to the doctor and hope the hospital hope you're a cute doctor. Yeah. Okay. 
This is like the worst tutorial on how to change your oil ever. How to create a funnel. Okay. Lori just invented the funnel. And the wheel. Yeah. Now hold it up against your skin, kind of near your That's skin. That's right. Cut. Always cut towards always your stomach. Cut towards your and that way, if you're pregnant, you you know you can do the cesarean section at the same time. You same know, same time, two birds, one stone. Yeah. All right. Now there's water inside here still, and since part of the reason, the main reason, the only reason I changed my oil is because there was water in it. You have a rag or a paper towel. Yep. Make sure you dry all the water out, all of it. This is going to be well over half an hour, but I'm going to post it, the whole thing anyway. I was looking for this. Yeah, what is yes, it? Yes, this is my hat oh. that my friend made for me. And this is my and my parents put it in uh. And there's my slippers. I mean seriously. <laughs> you leave home and you think you bring she's, everything with you and you come home ten years later and you're like, There's my slippers in the garage behind the truck. She scored it just before the Goodwill truck came and carted it away. I'm serious. It was in the rag bucket. <laughs> clean toilets with this. Oh that's my hat. I wonder why your hat smells funny when you wear it. No, I know. This is a shirt. Chicago. I like to tease people that can, though. Uh, you really going to post this whole thing? Sure, oh, why not? <laughs> Riveting television. So you take a t-shirt out of the trash. Yeah, you take you take your clothes that your mom and dad have thrown away because they've pretty much abandoned you. And yeah. And you, you did, you, did you go check your room today? Is it like all of a sudden all the furniture is gone and it's all reset? Could be an office now. Actually. Yeah, if you go to your bedroom and your uh, dad or your stepdad has turned it into the man cave, then maybe they're giving you a hint. No, I moved out when I was 18. Oh, uh, okay. And then I moved back when I lost my job. And then I moved out again. In this economy, that's a common story. That's true. It's fairly dry. There's a couple of tiny drops there, but I'm not, I'm not stressing it. You can't with your tiny hands, you can't get them all the way in the bottle? I can, but I'm cutting oh. myself. Oh, okay, yeah, This I see. is sharp. I didn't cut it very well. Mm. Okay. And then, get your oil. Don't tell your motorcycle that you're putting Honda oil on it. Oh, boy. Well, the thing is, if you put anything Honda on your bike, it'll be very reliable. It'll just be a lot slower. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna make sure Arizona wacko hears that part. <laughs> oh, you heard me. Listen. Yeah, I know. Uh, when you take this off, there is a little rubber piece on here. It's a gasket to seal this. Um, don't lose that. I've lost it before. You will have oil all over your brake lever, all over your boot, and you will lose oil as you're riding down the road. Yep. It's very important, and it's like a dollar. But if you lose it, that's not something that the dealerships are likely to keep in stock, and you'll be waiting a week for the part, not able to ride your bike for something stupid like that. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, mm. and then used it to clean out this water bottle. Okay. Hands are so cold. It's like 20 degrees outside. Is that going to fit over the opening properly? Is the opening big enough to fit yeah. our homemade funnel? Close enough for jazz. Hmm. It should work. I'd say put a bunch of rags underneath it too, though, just to be sure any little drippage, so. Drippage. Drippage, so your parents don't get upset. And so I don't waste the oil. Yeah. If I go real slow, that should be good. Okay. If you're wearing expensive Kevlar jeans, get them out of the way. You're doing it, Peter. All right. Well, this will take a while. It'd be nice if I had an actual funnel. I don't see one, do you? Nope. 
wasn't really sure what you had in your garage or I probably would have bought a, brought a bunch of my stuff up. I mean, I have all my oil change stuff all in one little section. I could have just grabbed the pan and everything. Oh, that would have been no fun. Yeah. Video like That's that. true, yeah. By doing it this way, it does make the videos a lot more interesting. How to change your oil like MacGyver. Really. I tell you what, we ought to offer a prize to somebody that's actually made it this long in the video and still watching us. I mean... If you're still watching us... We should it. award them this funnel, this homemade, uh, actually, and Lori Jennifer. This funnel. And she'll sign it, too. She'll even autograph it. will sign this funnel. You know there will be somebody that will ask. Yeah. I'll hang on to it just in case. Okay. Yeah, this is taking forever. I'm used to just plug, 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 plug. Yeah. What if I went the other way? Put this end in there. Think that would work? No. No. What I used to take is, uh, if you have anything that's made out of uh, plastic, I would just make my own funnel. I would just do like a paper funnel kind yeah, of deal. paper funnel. That's yeah. I mean, even a paper funnel made out of some pretty heavy paper, will uh, it'll work long enough to get the oil in and you just throw it away. Mm -hmm. um, You're a failure as a funnel hey, inventor. Hey. MacGyver would be ashamed of you. Face. <laughs> um... I would have swore we had a funnel around here. My gosh, you even have WD-40. I mean, that's kind of like handyman type of uh, deal oh, there. Yeah, we got... I thought we had a funnel. Let's look. Aha, right there. Where? Look at this. We wanted all that, and there it is right there. The right size, shape, and everything. It needs to be cleaned out, but we can do that. I have totally a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me go stick this upside on the snow so it drains over here. In okay. Hey, that way the tree will be well lubricated. Uh -huh. That's a good tree. Okay. Okay, now that we got the proper tool, the video is going to become even more boring. Yeah. Like a smeagol. She does a perfect smeagol voice. So what did you think of The Hobbit compared to the other Lord of the Rings? Oh, I hated it. You did? Yeah. Oh. Stupidest movie ever. I fell asleep. <laughs> I was watching it and I fell asleep. It was not action packed like the Lord of the Rings series, but I actually liked it. But I'm. I don't really care about action if they can draw me in with the characters, but they couldn't. Oh, the they didn't even. Were stupid. Oh. I just couldn't get into it. Well, the problem is with the original story, there are just so many characters you got to try to get to know. I mean. I'm sure that people that are not fans of The Hobbit probably will only be maybe partway through the next movie where you even start to know individually the characters. If, but, it, but the acting, I mean, the acting, and the, I know the dialogue set by the book, mm -hmm. but the acting did not pull me into wanting to get to know the characters. I didn't want to oh, invest okay. in watching it. I so just, you're probably not going to be watching parts no, two or three. I won't even bother. However, Warm Bodies... Everybody needs to go see that movie. Okay, that's the vampire movie. No, zombies. Zombies, oh, I'm sorry, zombie movie. Yeah. I will say that The Hobbit was a better love story than Twilight. Yeah. I only watched two of the Twilight movies and only because I'm into vampires enough that I'll even sit oh. through some of that, but I wouldn't, probably after watching the two of them. The, the, the second one I watched had motorcycles in it for just a little bit of time. But oh, that's cool. What did you ride? Um, there were some kind of dirt bikes or something like that, and then the girl, what does she do? She rides like less than a quarter of a mile and falls over and, and bruises her uh, wrist and gets all whiny. Well, she's whiny through the whole movie. I mean, that's basically her character, isn't it? Her, I don't know. She I've whines about every yeah. She whines about everything in life. My one of my favorite movies of all time is I Robot, and I can watch that movie every day and not be sick of it. And I have a feeling Warm Bodies is going to be one, one of okay. those movies too. It's clever. I was laughing at parts where I was the only one in the theater laughing. Oh. But when I go to a movie, I, I never go to a movie. Yeah. I was treating myself. I maybe go once every few years. And so I'm determined to have a good time. Yeah. And if you have that outlook when you go see a movie, unless it's really, 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 really crappy, you're going to have a good time. Oh, yeah. I think comedies are usually better in a theater, too, if you've got people that are really into it and they're laughing along with you. That's what I was doing. Yeah. But I was getting more looks than of course. after. Oh, well. 
thirsty bike. Honda Gold. Gold! Alright. Now, if you don't get that last drop, your muffler bearings can go bad. That's right. So, and, uh, Plus, you're like an environmental terrorist, too, and you're, you know, <laughs> throwing that oil into the landfills. Oh, well. Yeah. They should have thought of that before they dug it out of the earth. That's right. <laughs> yeah, isn't that so funny about you know that an oil spill totally destroys the ocean but yet underneath the ocean there are all kinds of fissures that open up and oil just pours into the ocean naturally because it's a natural product yeah it's only once we've altered it into this crap that it's really yeah. an issue crude oil is really it's just dead dinosaur bones mm -hmm. right and yes it hurts my feelings to see all the little creatures and stuff like that but you know before human beings were here uh that oil. Stuff was happening anyway. Yeah, that stuff was happening. Volcanoes killed wildlife. Oil killed wildlife. I watched kinds. a special on PBS this morning because I love documentaries mm -hmm. about this thing up in Canada. They discovered this huge field of like all these mastodon bones, like tons of them, mm -hmm. and they were always mixed in with where there were landslides. And they figured out what had happened was they'd gone up to this lake, and there'd be an earthquake, a massive one. They'd be far away that they wouldn't fall over, but if you shake something where there's sand and water, the sand will become like liquefied. Oh, liquefaction, yes, yes. what they call it. And they sunk, and then it would stop, and they were stuck, and they stopped yep. to death. I'm like, oh, that's horrible. Yep. Dozens of them. But then they started looking, and they started finding all these human tools, and they thought it was odd that with these layers of all these, all these mastodon bones, there were all these huge boulders, and they're thinking the humans used the, created a landslide to start the liquefaction to get the animals stuck, to trap them. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. It's very cool. Well, the Indians used to, you know, charge the buffaloes over precipices, too, to, you know, have them killed and then eat the... But they, like, rolled these huge boulders mm -hmm. to trigger landslides that would create, that would shake the earth enough to create li the liquefaction on the lake, and whole herds of them would be stuck, and they yeah. would just process and create a whole bunch of jerky, they're guessing. They're like, yeah. They couldn't eat that much at once, you know. You know, if there's like 20 dead yeah. mastodons. Yeah, 20, 20 elephants, you know, you're going to all of a sudden eat that. <laughs> so, yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. See, we even throw in a history lesson at no charge. Oh, there's a charge. Oh, okay. Remember that old joke when you're like in second grade? How do you keep an elephant from charging? Yeah, take away his credit card, blue. Yeah, and you think you're like the most clever kid ever. Yeah. There's an elephant hiding a bag of M&Ms. Paints his toenails red. I bet, because you know how like every generation of kids thinks they're the first ones to come up with these clever jokes. And oh, yes. Can you imagine being a grade school teacher? You'd have to go through with that every single year. Yeah. If you're a kid, and you have to laugh every time. Yep. Shut up, you're not funny. <laughs> Just crush the kids' dreams. This is really exciting. I'm doing a poor job here. Arr, arr, arr. Hey, the funnel is the only real thing we got going on here. Yeah. I actually started the puns anyway. It's my fault on the drive back after we picked up the oil. I started doing the puns before Lori did. He filtered most of them out, though. Yeah. Right, right. You're a funnel guy. I wonder if they have a Guyver on Netflix. I want to watch it. I don't know. You know, yesterday I saw this poor lady slip and fall on the ice. Oh, my gosh. At least I think she was poor. I went through her purse. There was only like a dollar twenty in it. <laughs> Got her with that one. Whoosh! Didn't see that one coming. Wham! From the side. Yeah, that was a good change of yeah. pace. I love the movie Airplane. It's like full of that kind of humor. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'm real nervous. Oh, is this your first time? Oh, no, I've been nervous lots of times. <laughs> and it's great because you can even watch it 15 minutes at a time. And it's like, you know, all you need is 15 minutes of it and then you can come back to it later. It's like... It's a great movie. It's a good movie to have on hand, but one of those fun movies when you're sick, just pop that in. The other one I like is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That's mm -hmm. so... Oh, I have that on Netflix. I oh. in my queue. I just haven't watched it yet. 
every time the deer comes to life in the back of the car. <laughs> Tommy boy. Yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, that's another... Uh, you know, you got these movies on a collection that it doesn't matter how many times you watch them, you'll still laugh every time you watch them. I don't know about you growing up around here, but I lived Ferris Bueller's life when I was a senior. Oh, okay. Minus the Ferrari and yeah. the parade and being mistaken for the Sausage King. But basically, my senior year of high school, I didn't go to school. Like, yeah. Hardly ever. I, I had all my requireds done. Mm -hmm. I was just there because I didn't really know what college I wanted to go to, and I was killing time. So I was taking classes like computer programming, photography, current issues, just yeah. blow off classes. So you didn't have to really show up, you could still get an A. They were so easy. The only hard class I was taking, I was taking some you know, extra English classes that were hard. Mm -hmm. We had to write some pretty big papers for and read some thick books, and then uh, French for, you know, you know, fourth year French, mm -hmm. where the whole class is in French. You know, all the, all the teachings in French and everything. Yeah, I took all four years of Spanish myself. Yeah, but except for that, the classes were easy. So, I, uh, I was just I glad they go. finally let me not take an English class in my senior year, too, because I took so many English classes that I didn't really care for. Although, I have to admit, I had good teachers that made it interesting, but I just wasn't into the subject. Okay, yeah. I, I love English. I took a lot of English classes. Must be warming up out here. The freezer just came yeah. down. Should be good to go. That's how you change the oil when you're too lazy to change the filter. That's right. <laughs> so that'll be another lesson for another day. Yeah. See, all this that we just showed you, don't do anything like it or even similar to what we just showed you. Yeah. Do it a different way. Do it differently. If you, as long as you don't do this, it'll be good. Yeah. So should we fire it up for a test? Yeah, let's go ahead and see if, it, see if it'll stay running. If you look here on this, this got jammed out. Like this used to be inside here. Oh, okay. So the whole thing got jammed up against this. So what I need to do is get the Allen head to loosen this so I can push this in, but I would say if it still functions, probably wait till you get back to Kansas City. If it's, it's still not coming back from Kansas City for several months, it's staying oh. here. It sticks. It's stiff. It's not. Do you think you could back. time it to where we could all go together then? If you could time it to. I might. It depends. Because we're all yeah, since we're all going for uh, May twenty first, if we could all ride together, because well, it'd be no, it wouldn't be all together because Tom's coming from another direction, but it'd be me and you going to Kansas City, and then Tom coming down from. Let's see. Council Bluffs. <laughs> Yeah. It was all white crap coming out. Yeah. And that's all gone now. Good. Like it was all white. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a stupid catalytic converter. That's got to be what it is. I gotta get rid of that. So why is it all white now? I don't know. It's not right. Will that automatically adjust the idle? Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's burning smoke or burning out oil. Yeah. Is it? Well, it's not really blue enough. It's still more white than blue. That's usually more a sign of moisture than oil. Yeah. I wonder if there's 
normally probably clear even in the cold weather. It's kind of coming in pulses. It almost clears out, and then it's pulsing with more so. It's got to be that catalytic conversion. Maybe it's just cleaning itself out. Because you see, it's getting clearer now. Yeah. We stand in here. We should close the garage door. Yeah. See how long we can last. Whoever dies first loses. <laughs> if you die, I'm going to kill you. Okay, yeah. It's improving. You see all the water condensing underneath? You see the puddle of water underneath there dripping? Yeah. I think a lot of them do have, don't they have a drain hole though in the front of it to, so that it doesn't fill up with water? My one Jeep had, I don't think this Jeep has it, but my Jeep before, it had a little condensation hole drilled on it so that it does, the water doesn't sit in there. Look at now, it's almost completely, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's it. getting better and better. No, I, I think we solved it, it's, yeah. it's just got to work its way out. Yeah. It smells terrible, because it's covered in all that salt when it yeah. heats up. <laughs> Alright, um, i got to drain this into here. Hello, funnel. What usually happens is when the bottle's about half full, it tips over on me and then goes all over the floor. Thanks for that. Yeah. I do wonder where my parents are. They're supposed to be back by now. Uh-oh. They may have stopped by to see my grandma on the way home. This will be the longest video on YouTube. Yeah. It's going to be the longest I ever posted. It'll probably be about an hour, even if I added out some of the... Well, if I added out the boring stuff, it would be three minutes, but... If... <laughs> I can't tell how full it is. Yeah. So you're close enough. probably try starting on the other one. Trying to determine if Lori's full of it or not. Hardy, hard, hard. Yeah, there's like gelatiny stuff in here. Oh. Well, it looks milky, it, it, mm -hmm. like how it would look when there's coolant. Yeah. And I just realized it's because there was windshield wiper fluid in here. Oh, yeah. But here's a good lesson for you if you want to bring the camera in close and look inside here. You see those like white bubbly things inside there near the back? Yeah. Um, if you get coolant from your radiator into your gas, that's how it'll look. Kind of like into like like there's little like miniature tap yeah into your oil. It'll look like there's little bits of tapioca in there. Mm. Look kind of milky. They but call it's it. probably not edible, is it? Uh, you can try it. I don't mm. want to hear about it. Okay. And not be held liable. If you can drink bleach and survive with no effects, then you might want to try it. Oh, I see. Pretty good. We didn't overfill either one. That's a good thing. All right. Man, all that water. Why is there so 
much water in my system. The shirt's trash. It got covered in oil anyway, yep. so. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any shortage of dirty rags, so. No. I'm going to let that drain into that. I will set it up right here. Let that drain. We're good to go. Oil has changed. Later on today, I will go get gas so I can fill it up because I won't be riding it for a while. So what I'm going to do, whenever you here's here's a great here's how you winterize your motorcycle. Okay. Have that in there too. When you winterize your bike, um, you can change the oil before or wait and change it in the spring. I like to change it before too. With I'll just put cheap oil in like this, yeah. just so there's fresh oil sitting in there and I'll let it run for a cycle like that. Um, you should always check your oil after you change it, but because I know how much it takes, and I've done it on this bike a thousand times, I don't need to. Basically, I always hold my front brake so it won't roll on me. Center it, and check on your side glass. It should be between that line and that line. Oh, there, it just popped up. Yep. And it looks like it's dead center to me. Yep, I've done this before. So, I know I don't need mm. to, but yeah. if, if the bike's new to you, or you're not sure how much you put in there, or whatever, always run it for like 20 seconds to cycle the oil through, especially, and that, you need to do that if you change the filter. Yep. Because it'll appear to be overfilled at first, but yes, then when it runs because through the, the filter's not filled. Yeah. And then, uh, and then check it again, and then add more if necessary. So yeah, that's that is how you change oil on a motorcycle. And also how you end up posting your first well, me how I end up posting posting my first hour and a half long video <laughs> you on YouTube. I'm going to post a lot. It's probably going to be over an hour, I bet you. That's awesome.